Welcome to my humble experiment room, a little bit messy. Today we're going to be talking about uh, an experiment I've done, uh, comparing climb-up interceptors to modified blueboards. This is my latest uh, experiment tank that I built, uh, where we use carbon dioxide and, and uh, as evenly as possible try to find out well, which one works better. But before we talk about this experiment, let's talk about how we got there. I'll sit down here on my fancy chair, my five gallon pail. With this picture right over here. This is a clamp interceptor surrounded by ordinary Trapper Max glue boards. You want to zoom in there so you can see the bugs on the edge there. Like so. Uh, this was a pretty severe infestation. Uh, that trap, by the way, is only five days old. So you know how severe that was. Uh, there's variants of this type of trap as well. These are pictures of those as well. And you see there's a little block of wood uh, on the glue boards. And this is a one that's kind of like it, except new just for demonstration. It's just a, a block of plywood right on top of uh, some glue boards. So stick that on there and screw the interceptor on there. And that's a variant uh, that worked a little bit better. Uh, by the way, you have to throw the plywood away because uh, sometimes the bugs get into the plywood underneath. Uh, so uh, you need to be careful with that. Anyways, these types of traps here, we've been working with uh, for a long, long time, years. Uh, I actually didn't pioneer the chemical-free method. Actually, a friend of mine did, who is an apartment block owner. He runs a couple hundred suites. And uh, we started off uh, with the standard procedure. Uh, which was two courses of uh, tempo uh, with uh, heating the furniture and applying these traps. And he had fantastic results. And uh, then he said, well, we're catching all these bugs, like you see here on this trap. And I said, well, why, why are we doing chemical treatments? And I just tried to discourage him. He said, well, I have no idea how that would work. But uh, he insisted he went ahead with it and did it anyways. So we went down to a single treatment and it worked just as well. And uh, a short while later, he skipped the uh, chemical treatments altogether because he was catching all these bugs and glue boards. And I thought that was a fascinating experiment. I was, couldn't wait to see how that would work out. And as it turns out, it worked out extremely well. Uh, he's got rid of bugs with nothing more than heating the beds and using traps like this or variants thereof um, in roughly 70 suites, maybe more. And at first, um, I didn't know what to make of this. I thought maybe he was lying, maybe he was doing something that I didn't know about. But I tried in my own building, and yes, indeed, we can get rid of bugs in seven, actually six suites in our own, uh, in our own apartment block. And uh, I've also explained this process to a number of homeowners, and they've tried it in their own homes as well. And there's probably three or four homes at least where the folks have tried the chemical-free method, and uh, they're very happy. In Winnipeg here, there's actually a little following of this, uh, of this method. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, anyways, one thing we found is that these traps didn't work on carpet. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, I don't know exactly why, but uh, they, they function poorly on carpet. Uh, it may be that the glue boards were bending up too much, or whatever the reason, or perhaps there was a difference in substrate as they went from carpet to a slippery substrate. Uh, there's a number of reasons that could have been repelled. Whatever reason, they didn't work on carpet. So, okay, I figured I'm going to try to fix that. So, I came up with something like this. Uh, this was actually designed just to uh, keep the, uh, uh, the glue board off the floor. Uh, sort of, sort of the glue board uh, from bending. Uh, it's actually just a piece of hard board, about an eighth of an inch thick, and you can see I cut about a five degree uh, angle on it. And then I covered it with this packing tape. This is a Staples tape uh, from Staples. Uh, but you can use any tape, I'm sure it'll be just fine. So this whole board has been manufactured and covered with that tape. And then I took uh, an ordinary glue board, like these, these uh, Bell Labs Trapper Max glue boards, and I cut a square out of it so that there would be a nice sharp edge all the way around it. 
and we found that uh, these edges are super sticky. They're much stickier than the ordinary edges, like these. I'll show you these. When you have these glue boards here, I'll try to pull this back. There is uh, this glue board right, edge right there. It's actually kind of tapered uh, from the factory. Uh, it tapers from quite thick to almost nothing. And I found that it doesn't, it's not all that sticky right on that very edge. But if you cut it, like so, that cut edge is much thicker and much, much stickier. So immediately we have a stickier trap. So we have here combined a very slippery substrate that uh, bed bugs can't climb, uh, coupled with a glue board that is much, much stickier and much thicker. And then I put it to the test in my little experiment uh, tank here. There's, there's my camera there. Anyways, this is a, the only experiment that I've done where I actually could catch all the bugs in a pan. Uh, we've experimented with interceptors and different kinds of traps, and there's always some kind of repellency. It's a, always a matter of how, how many percent of the bugs can you catch. And interestingly enough, this particular trap could catch all of them. Uh, which is unusual because all the other traps I've experimented with could not do that. Uh, that I found very interesting. So we let our friends know about this and they've immediately switched over to different kinds of traps. I'll show you how that works. I'll just steal this interceptor here. Now, this is an example of the, the newest version well, we've gone through numerous versions of this before, but this is the newest one. We're always improving. But it's, we just put an interceptor on top of this piece of plywood with a piece of cut uh, glue board. And those nice uh, sharp edges on the glue there. Very nice. And of course, we put it onto this, uh, onto this piece of hardboard that's been covered with uh, packing tape. This was actually done with 4-inch packing tape instead of 2-inch, but close enough. And there's a 5-degree bevel again. So we screw that on from the bottom, just using you know, those type of wood screws right there. And so it's nice and secure there. And then we screw the interceptor on top of there like that. And that worked excellent for carpet. And uh, we use that successfully in carpet a number of times. It works excellent. Uh, I'm not so sure about hard floors. Uh, you know, anytime you make a tiny little change to the experiment, you know, with how the bugs behave, it, you know, it's all up in the air. But for carpet, this worked excellent. And we're still working on, uh, on variants for, for hard floors. One of the variants that we're testing right now, and we'll see how well it works, is uh, this piece of paper here. It's an 18 point paper. It's the same paper that are used in the glue boards in this one here. Get around here. The same one as this Trapper Max. It's the same paper that they're using. This is exactly the same paper. And I just had it uh, custom made at my local paper shop. And we take this board and put it on top of there and just use an ordinary stapler uh, to staple onto the back. And then you can take whatever one you on top. You can actually screw a, a tuna can onto there, like so, just an ordinary tuna can. Uh, for the inexpensive version, or the one I'm using is just screw a clamp interceptor on top of that. Uh, if you want to protect the glue even further, if it's sweet's really dirty, you can just put a board or whatever on top of it and screw it on like so. And now the glue board is entirely protected. You know, if there's kids or pets or whatever or really dirty. Uh, anyways, that is my newest experiment. I'm kind of excited to see how this is going to work. I'm, uh, I'm quite optimistic because I'm assuming that if my ordinary trap like this works quite well, that this one with a stickier edge and the same paper will be equal. But uh, <laughs> I've been wrong before. Uh, the tiniest change makes a great big difference. But uh, I'll let you know how this thing goes. But I'm quite optimistic. But anyways, uh, we've been having some great success. With, uh, with this trap here, here. Um, especially on carpets. 
And uh, I wanted to put these uh, traps to the test. Uh, I actually saw uh, an experiment done by others that looks very similar to this one. And so I thought I would build my own uh, trap uh, experiment. And here's, here's my screwdriver. Here we go. So anyways, uh, this here is just an ordinary, oh, I don't know what a cottage cheese container. It's got a couple of holes drilled in it for the CO2 can come out. There's a hose that comes up here and goes off to my CO2 tank. So we had CO2 running for, the, for this experiment, you know, just like the one that I saw before. And I built a nice little table here, and each leg goes on to a different uh, trap. Here in this corner here is a clamp interceptor, and diagonally from that is another clamp interceptor. In the back there is my modified glue board, and here is the other glue, modified glue board. And I let the experiment run for 24 hours, and we caught 34 bugs in my modified glue boards and four in the interceptors. That was amazing. That means that my modified glue boards are 8.5 times more effective than the standard clamp interceptor. And the interceptor does work. Uh, I use them a lot. But interesting enough, glue boards like these are dirt cheap. And with those cheap glue boards, you can make your own traps like the ones I've already mentioned, like the ones that I've, uh, are listed right over there in my experiment trap. We know those things work extremely well. So you can make your own here uh, with a little bit of hard board and some packing tape and plywood and maybe an old tin can. Or if you want to be adventuresome, uh, be a little more daring, maybe try uh, one like that with the, uh, with the paper. Or even yet more daring, you know, make your own paper at the bottom out of a same old uh, life cereal box, like so. This is that cereal is uh, just uh, one side is covered with uh, packing tape to make it nice and slippery. But keep in mind, it's a little bit thicker, and of course, you're adding another variable to to that uh, experiment. But I'm thinking it should be okay, but you know, you never know. Now, it's true that I have patented this trap right here, but it's actually part of a much larger patent. Uh, it's a, a bed bug inspectable bed. Uh, it's a bed that funnels bed bugs into a very specific location on the bed and uh, encourages the bugs to stay on that exact part of the bed. And of course it flips open very easily so that you can inspect it. Uh, I'm having very high hopes for, for this bed. But anyways, uh, if you folks want to take this part of that invention and, uh, and make a few on your kitchen table, like peace to you. Uh, if you phone me up, I might even uh, give you some advice on how to do it. I'd actually envision community groups, uh, perhaps uh, learning how to make these uh, for folks that uh, don't have the equipment or tools or knives or whatever the, the case may be. Because we do know that they're very effective and they're not a whole lot of money. Now, I'm going to follow up this video uh, with another video on uh, the methods I use for making these things. You know, like how do you make the angle on that board and uh, cutting up plywood, uh, how to cut the, the glue board so it's most efficient. Uh, over the years we have developed a few techniques with that. And most importantly, I'd like to start blogging about uh, the chemical-free methods uh, and what's required for chemical-free bed bug removal. Uh, this is not a magic process by any means. It's a very, very specific process. Uh, you have to understand bed bug behavior and you have to be very careful with what you do. And it really actually begins uh, with how you arrange your furniture even before you get bed bugs uh, and the precautions that you take ahead of time. Uh, all these things come into play in how to make bed bug bed bugs disappear in a chemical-free fashion. Anyways, we can come back to you later.